Okay, as promised, I have the third installment of these cards. This is card number three. You can view the videos prior to this for card number one and card number two. Right now we're going to focus on the stepped up version of the card, card number three. As you can see, I've switched it over to a purple posy card base. Okay, so we've got a purple posy card base. We're going to emboss that with our tuffeted folder. So that's similar to the second card. We also are going to be adding a frame in Purple Posy using the Heirloom Frames and Dies. I'm going to show you how I run mine through my Big Shot to how I get the best effect, but we're going to do that. Uh, you've already seen me stamp, die cut, and color the image of the flower, so that part's done. Then we're just going to make our little tag and we'll put it all together. So let's go ahead and start by doing the work on the Big Shot. Okay. So, move this up there for a minute, bring in my, my Big Shot machine. So, first thing we're going to do is emboss the card base. So I'm embossing the card front. And this is a thick folder, and I have a full card, right? So I need to open up my thing to its full flat opening. So I'm just, see how I have my card in there? kind of right on the fold. So I'm just going to put that flat in my Big Shot. I'm going to put an embossing plate over the top. Now my tuffeted folder is from the prior catalog so I still use my clear um, cutting plate on top. If you have one of the new 3D tuffeted folders that came out after the new catalog those are by a different manufacturer and they are a different thickness. You need to run yours through with the blue embossing plate. So I've used that on a few other videos so you can find that pretty easily. But there is a difference. So, Or you can just shim it. right? You can shim it with another layer of cardstock if you need to. But I will tell you there is a difference. So don't get frustrated. Just be wise to what you need to do. Okay, so now we're going to make our heirloom frame. Now I actually have the one for the card already in the purple posy, but I'm going to show you how I feel like I get the best results. First thing I'm going to do is get my oval right here and I cut my oval first. Now some people are going to say, no, you shouldn't cut your oval first. You should always emboss it first and then line up the embossing image with the oval. Well, I like to see what I'm embossing and I don't feel like I can cut and I don't feel like I can emboss and then cut it face down and feel like I have a good position on it. So I cut my oval first. Okay. So now I've got my oval. Then I get my embossing folder. Here's the oval one. All right, it's I don't believe it's a thick one, so I need two plates. But what I do is I put my frame now into my folder and I feel with my fingers and I kind of position the opening with the opening. All right? Does that make sense? I can see through my folder, so I can position the opening of my oval with the opening oval of my folder. Then I just pinch that down. I put one on the bottom, I'm going to put one on the top, and that's too thick. So it is a single one, so I'm going to pull out the bottom plate. See, even I have trouble knowing how to make my sandwich sometimes. Pull out my bottom plate, and I'll run that through. emboss because I didn't feel like it did, but maybe it did. No, it did not emboss. So I'm going to try that again. Let's see. I'm pretty sure this is not the way to do it, but I've been wrong before. Let's position that again. No. All right. I'm having a little bit of trouble. Let's try one tab. There might be better. Cross your fingers and see what we get. 
Still nothing. This is upsetting. Okay, maybe I was right the first time. Maybe it is two plates, which is what I thought it should have been. But it didn't seem to want to go through my machine. Do you guys ever have trouble like this? I bet you do. Nope, oh, that's really not going through. I wonder if I just need my bigger, like I was just saying, the blue plate. Maybe it did it that time. Yeah, it did it that time. Phew! Okay, so these are the new embossing boulders and they need the blue plate. See? Now I've shown you in person and you got to struggle through that with me. I'm sorry for that. So. But it was easier to position my oval in my folder. It just took me a little difficulty getting it through the big shot. So for the big shot, you use the blue plate on top. That would have done it. So there you go. Then I have a nice crisp image, once you get your sandwich correct, of that oval and I have it where I want it. Okay, well, let's put that aside and put the card together. So here we go. We've got our card base, all right? I'm just gonna fix my crease a little bit. There, card base. Now I've got my oval and I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals. I'm gonna put one in each position here, north, south, east, west, so that it's going to hold its shape for us. I'm just going to put that right down on top. Okay, now I'm going to add my magnolia, which again I stamped and colored with my memento and my blends. this over and I'm just gonna kind of feed that down into the frame a little bit. Just make sure it fits inside the perimeter of your of your card. Uh, we have to stamp and do the sentiment. So just cleaning off black ink from my stamp real quick. So I want to stamp this in the Granny Apple Green again, because that will tie in with our petals. Go this way. And I am going to just use a layering oval framelit on my Big Shot. This sandwich, I know. We won't have any trouble with this. So, put that on my cutting plate. Position my frame lid over the top, another one on top, run that through. And I didn't go with the stitched oval, which I know a lot of times I go with the stitched shapes for my embellishments, but I felt like there was an awful lot going on on the card, so I didn't want to overdo it. So I have that. So let's go ahead and add that with a couple dimensionals. Now here's a little trick with these. I'm going to put my dimensional there. And I'm going to put my dimensional behind the thinking of you, the thinking part. And now I'm just going to put this over the top. Okay. And let's not forget a couple of our sequins just to sparkle it up a little bit. And there we go. Okay. So we did it. Again, sorry for the big shot trouble. But I'm sure I just seem human to you now. I'm not a superstar. So there we go. There's the third card. So I hope you enjoyed the series here of the three cards. Remember we did this nice simple stamping one here. I stepped it up with a layer and some embossing with the die cut there. And then here we added the um, heirloom frames to put on there. So there you go. One, two, three. I hope you enjoyed this week's series of videos. And I hope you'll join me again next week. I'll have some more fun stuff with you. Uh, I'm going to start sharing some of the holiday catalog projects on the blog next week. So not everything's going to get a video because I can't buy and own everything. I have to, you know, have a budget too. 
So hop over to the blog, subscribe, so you get all my emails of all the things I do share, so you don't miss out on anything fun that you might really want. And anytime you can support me with an online order, that would be fantastic. It's the way I cover my expenses <laughs> to get the things that I like to play with and that I like to share in classes too. So there you go, everybody. Enjoy this week's tutorials, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.